Hello guys, Winston here. Way back in 2015, I picked up this dog tag from the YouTube booth at PAX East. They were letting people submit their channel names to be printed on these, and for about 5 seconds I thought it was a pretty cool bit of swag. Then I looked closer and saw just how shoddy and cheap the printed graphics were. And so, as a budding YouTuber with a shape Oko, my immediate thought was that I could go home and engrave this dog tag myself. I would make a video out of it, and fame and glory would immediately befall me. Well, if you've been with my channel since the beginning, you'll know that that video never happened. My YouTube dog tag has been hanging on my lamp for years. But when I recently purchased a diamond tip drag engraving tool, I ran out of excuses. This tool makes it so easy to mark metals that I couldn't not make some dog tags. But before we head to the garage, let's go over some basics. A drag engraving bit is a spring-loaded device with a hardened tip that'll mark anything and everything softer than itself. And since this tool has a tiny piece of diamond at the tip, it can mark a lot of things. Now, because these tools score rather than cut, they don't actually remove material, they physically displace it. The geometry of this process means that the volume of material moved increases exponentially with depth, as does the force required to cause this. Because springs act linearly, a drag bit will very rapidly hit an equilibrium point, so the engraving process can almost be described as self-limiting. Let's put that to the test in the garage. The engraving tool I'm using is from Benchtop Precision. I was tipped off to this one in the unofficial Shapeoko and Nomad group on Facebook, and it's one of the more affordable ones I've seen. Not only does it come with a quarter inch shank and a choice of tip angles, but it also has a screw in the back for adjusting preload, a feature sometimes missing on cheaper tools. I'm going to engrave my logo four times with different feed rates. This is partly because I'm a bit of a narcissist, but mostly to see if having the engraving tip lingering in an area longer will cause it to press deeper into the material. Here we see an engraving at 30, 60, 90, and 120 inches per minute. And there isn't really any difference in the thickness or visibility of the lines. There's a little weirdness happening at higher speeds, it could be the result of deflection caused by resistance at the tip of the engraving tool, or something like an artifact of digital deceleration profiles filtered through the finite resolution of stepper motors. Until someone figures that out for me though, I'll be running the rest of my engravings at 60 inches per minute. Let's try running duplicates and even triplicates of the toolpath. And nope. Repeated passes can't deepen your engraving because the first pass already got as far as the physics will allow. For the last variable, let's look at pressure which is proportional to the z-height of the spindle. For the first pass, I'll compress the engraving bit by 10 thou, then I'll try it with 30 thou of compression, and finally 50 thou. It's really subtle, but at least from my perspective, 50 thousandths of spring compression did produce a thicker line, but only just barely. So from that experiment, you can see that even with some height variations, you can still produce a very consistent engraving. Let's apply this to a dog tag. While I could just miniaturize the tool paths that I'd use for my tests and engrave a dog tag with them, I felt that there just wasn't enough visual punch there. Two weeks ago, I caught wind of Nick over at RunCNC TV engraving brass with crosshatch texturing to fill his letters and features. I asked him what program he was using, and he said Aspire. I don't have Aspire, but that's actually not a problem. Fusion 360's parallel finishing toolpath will work just fine for this. Let me show you how. First, you'll need either a tool with a ridiculously tiny diameter or a chamfer mill in your tool library. Then, you can use it in a parallel toolpath on your desired contours. Now, if you just click OK, you'll see that the resulting toolpath isn't ideal. The transitions between segments spill beyond your contours. You'll need to go to the linking tab in the toolpath options and change transitions to straight. Much better. However, the pattern here is only in one direction. To make this a crosshatch pattern, you need to add a perpendicular pass. And by adjusting step over distance, you can control how fine that pattern is. But for my logo, which is designed at 60 degree angles, crosshatching didn't really look that good. Instead, I scrapped the perpendicular pass and shaded my logo in directions parallel to each segment. Just to clean up the edges, I'll do a trace operation around the perimeter. And I think that looks like a pretty good fill for my engraving. On the reverse side of my dog tag, I'll use a more normal 45 degree crosshatching texture to fill my letters. And that, my friends, is the basics of using a diamond drag engraving tool, and how to use Fusion 360 to get around a lack of CAM programs specialized for artistic applications. These tools are really easy and forgiving to use, so if you need to mark metal, I'd seriously try one of these out before reaching for a V-bit to mechanically engrave your piece. Quick Patreon announcement before I sign off, for my recycling tier patrons, if you want one of these dog tags, message me your address and I'll send you one in the mail. For all you other patrons, I'll hopefully have stickers to give away by the time I come back from Maker Faire. Speaking of Maker Faire, I'll be visiting Los Angeles, San Diego, and San Francisco on the following dates. If you have any tips on cool places I have to visit, and especially to go eat, leave them in the comments down below. 
and if there's enough interest in a meetup, let me know as well. Maybe we can wrangle some of the Carbide 3D crew to partake in a nerdy CNC hangout in LA. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back with another CNC-related project video in a week or two.